Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain spend, send forth the same place, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Amen. I do. So can a fountain reveal or bring forth fresh and salt water. Those great analogies by the elder brother, James, James the elder. Many have said maybe this is James, Jesus' brother, um, who write this great um, narrative about the tongue. The tongue, right? It's talking about speech, talking about how um, we should not be quick to be master. We should not be quick to speak um, because we must be very careful about our words. And when we begin to speak, we are assuming whose position, really God's position. We are bringing forth the word, right? Bringing forth the word. And we know, if you read the book of John, the gospel according to John, it said what in the beginning was the word, the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. It is through the word that we come alive. In Genesis, the Bible tells us of the power of that word. The divine principle helps us understand that word even better, right? Meaning, um, how we disobeyed God's word. So in the garden, somebody just give me a brief narrative of the fall. Anybody who, has, who understands or can share a bit about the fall of man. What happened? <clears throat> what happened? Was it... Um, was the word employed to help make the fall possible? Yes. Yes. The word. The word. The word and we say tongue, right? Or we can say speech. All these things go together. What we speak. So the word has always been the subject position. The word is what creates us, what makes us be. The word, Miyoko, she says she answer. That word, it's her name. She identifies with it. How do we connect to God first and fully? How? It is centered on the word. To connect to God first, you must know God's word, what God wants, what God desires. It's the word. How did you connect to God first? Maybe your mom started with a story about Jesus, about God. Somebody took you maybe to church, maybe took you to workshop. Or maybe somebody met you on the road and introduced you to the word. Say, hey, you know, come. We, we, we find Messiah. We find where somebody has the right truth. The word is also what? It's truth, right? It can be truth and it can also be lies. The word. The word met you on the road through somebody. I know my wife, that's how she met the church. Somebody met her and gave her some word, some good word. Ooh, she followed that word. And now still expanding on the word. So how do I connect, Brother Jason, Father Bio? How do we connect fully and first and fully to God? It must be centered on the word. And so we must then know what the right word, meaning the truthful word, not the lie word, right? Because you can, words are both. You can use it, as I said, the tongue to build or to destroy. How we use our word can make somebody happy or can make them sad or can make them confused. Our word, our word. 
Now, in the fall of man, the word was misused, right? Is that true? I don't want to hear it. Yes, sir. Is it true? Yes. The word was misused. Who misused the word? Satan. Satan. <laughs> Lucifer misused the word. Lucifer twists the word. Lucifer. And Lucifer was what? Archangel. Is that right? Arch, right? That's Arch. Angel. Is that a bad thing or a good thing to be an archangel? Good. Listen now, very important. Because many times people, especially with the, with DP related, people always think when you're archangel, you're bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. There's bad archangel and there's good archangel. Yeah, so many good archangels are there. Archangel was the trusted servant of God. Lucifer was the archangel. And that word Lucifer means bright and morning star. The most beautiful after God. Damn. The one whom God trusted. With what? With what? The word. Speak up to engage this deeply. So archangel is a good word until you become fallen or bad archangel. Or we say disobedient. Disobedient. When you disobey God's word, then you become bad archangel. Everybody, listen to small secret, maybe you know it already. Everybody and every time anybody stands in front of you to speak, he is assuming or she's assuming that position of archangel. Archangel was somebody God trusted, an entity, a being, spiritual being, God trusted to take care of who? Adam, Adam and Eve. And they are supposed to be his, God's Father. children. Father. Sorry, Father. forgive me. Father. Yeah, Adam and Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right. Sometimes British way, American way, Nigerian way. So, they, 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 Archangel was a trusted servant that was supposed to take care of God's children, Adam and Eve. Unfortunately, we know what happened. Archangel misused the word. Misused the word. Meaning, twisted the word. He lied. He lied. In short and simple, a lie. When you try compromise or twist the word, even one small degree, you're lying. No matter how you try to, you're lying. You're lying, period. Once you don't, just come straight. That's why the Bible says somewhere, I can't remember, it says, let your word be yes or nay. When somebody asks you a question or something, try your best to be clear. Oh, no, I can't do this. Yes, I can. Not, uh, uh, and sometimes maybe you are wrestling. But <laughs> it's good to be able to be clear. Yes, I can. But let me think about it. Okay, think about it before you. But it's good to be clear. Archangel twisted the word, meaning lied. And you would find out in that, in that, in that, um, narrative of the fall, how the lie was very good logic, wasn't it? Was good logic. Oh yeah, very good logic, most powerful, reasonable logic. Oh, God didn't really say that. You know, God know when you eat this fruit, you're gonna become like God. It was a lie. He was telling the truth in a way. But he twisted the word. He made it confusing to, to Eve. And Eve had no choice but to go along. Because this person was a trusted servant. This person was put there by God. True parent appointed for the Bible to be pastor.
pastor in Richmond. Wow, all true parent children, everybody, members of the church. Of course, because true parent in the position we say God, just for our analogy, for the Bible, Archangel, God sent and said, please teach my children the word, teach them the true word. Don't eat of the food. Don't commit fornication until you are ready, until I bless you, and all those good things. But now, because truth parent, which is God, in this analogy, trusted for the Bible as archangel, automatically, the children or members will also give for the Bible or that archangel, that new leader, the benefit of the doubt. They will trust that person too. Adam and Eve trusted the archangel, and then the archangel misused that trust. What I'm trying to say more to us about connecting fully to God, then your human connections will not determine your faith. It's very important. It's unfortunate that Men, in the fall, Adam and Eve were still in their growing period. And unfortunately, they were not connected fully at heart to God. Because this is the person who's supposed to teach them how to connect fully to God. Supposed to be the good example. Supposed to lead by example. And talk by example. Unfortunately, he or she, Archangel, had their own struggle with God, with the word that God gave, and other things that were self-centered, selfish on their own part. Archangels always speak. We are always speaking. Even Father is in position of Archangel. As a as 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 true Father who come Jesus all oh, the they were really in that position because they were seeking to indemnify this position to help mankind to connect back to God the right way, which was the archangel's position. And, and that's what you find out many times, archangels or leaders, pastors, true father number one, can talk for hours. Eh? Eh? True father can talk for hours. Because he is the, the word. He has to bring God's word. But be careful. Because bad archangel too can talk for hours. And if not more. The word is said that a word, one small word, is enough for the wise. If you're a wise person, when they tell you just one time, one time, you will take it to heart. You don't need all these volumes of books, really, to help you know how to love or do right. Maybe the Ten Commandments, if you really study it, now don't do this, don't do this, okay. It's enough. should be enough, right? Two commandments. Huh? Two commandments. Two, and it's reduced down to two commandments. The Ten Commandments, which is actually 66, 700 ordinances, reduced down to ten, and they're reduced down to two. That should be enough. Two lines. Love God with all your heart, right? All your being, everything, all your money, everything you have. Love God. And then the same way, you should love your fellow human being. With that same intensity. It seems very simple. Oh, why am I? Why do we have all these big books? <laughs> because we're not that wise. <laughs> because we're not that wise. Because we are falling. We never grew up to connect substantially with the world, with God. Our mind and body, back to the principle, our mind and body was never fully connected, and hence we're not fully connected to God. So we are still like searching for the true world. Like it's like it's missing. Oh, people run here. Oh, they go to this church, they go to that place, and they keep finding those bad angels. <laughs> And because sometimes they're over-dependent on the archangel, 
when you over depend on the archangel, if you don't connect yourself fully to God, as God wants you to, as God requires, lovingly wants us to connect, then very easy for your human connections to determine your fate. Very easy. When you over, I'm, I'm not excusing us as archangels as pastors, but when you over put that person, he or she, oh, they are so wonderful, they are so great, you never live with them. Yes, give them the benefit of doubt, which you should. Yeah, everybody is so great. Everybody. Not just one person or two persons. No. When you give everybody the benefit of the doubt that everybody is sacred, everybody has a sacred spark of God in them, then you begin to know how to, to, to identify yourself fully as one who has to connect to God fully to, just as you would respect this other person to connect to God fully. But when you are putting one person on the, this so-called high pedestal, even close to God or with God, from beginning, you set yourself up for heartache. You're going to set yourself up for faith crisis. Because when that person makes mistake. Because you've too much, your emotion, everything is around this person. You, then your heart breaks. Very difficult. It's just like love, right? When we love, when the husband and wife loves, when they really love, when the wife or the husband violates that love, wow. Maybe because the, the wife, yes, the spouses, we should love each other, love each other. But we must understand there is God. My spouse here should help me connect to God. That is the purpose of marriage. Not, not that my spouse, I, over, I have to help my wife to connect. She has to help me connect. We have to, well, not that I over, you know, um, oh, she's so righteous. She's everything. And, and then when she makes small mistake, I cannot forgive her. Because I over put her in this high pedestal. But when we realize that all of us, from Jesus, the Messiah's children, true family, whatever names, titles we put on each other, which is okay, pastor, missionary, youth leader, da, da, da. When we realize that all of us are really fallen people trying to do right, then we can respect each other a little bit more, be sensitive to each other a little bit more, and live out the principle of the word even if I cannot live up to that standard that God requires, at least we will be able to be around the arena of saying, hey, I cannot speak too quick about somebody else because I myself, I'm still a sinner. I got to be careful in my eagerness to speak the word, as James said, to talk. Oh, you know, this person should have done this. This person should, you know. Oh, ah, I've always warned you and I always warned my wife every time. I say, listen, the worst thing is to, in life, is to speak authoritatively about a subject. To speak like you really are the number one person who is with God and all that. And to make people really believe that while in reality inside you, you're not really there. And even if you're there, we have to be so humble about it because we never know. Satan does not want true people to stand. Right? He doesn't. Satan doesn't because it would take away from his dominion. False archangels don't like to give up power and position because of selfish, self-centeredness, corrupt mind has entered and it only starts with one small word of that keeps you confused hmm. what did you say lucifer no god didn't say like that oh but you know angel know how to talk <laughs> they know how to talk we know how to talk i'm talking to myself too we know how to talk how to hmm Go around, circumvent, 
and they make you believe like, oh, sounds like, sounds like principle, it sounds like truth. I'm saying to me, I'm saying to you, watch, don't be too eager to pass any kind of judgment on another. Don't be too eager to think you now know God more than the other person. Know that the more the persons who can speak softly, gently, many times, and then their actions speak better than just their talk, I want to hopefully be like that. This is, I really, really want to be like that. I hope you too want to be like that. I hope you want that your action, your foundation of what we call it, come on somebody, your foundation, action, foundation of Perfect. substance, going to speak louder than, oh, I love true parent. Oh, I love Miyoko. How do I love Miyoko? I never show I love Miyoko. Oh, she break her arm. Pastor cannot even come. Because pastor too busy or something. Pastor cannot show love to her. Or brother, children cannot show love to her. But yet, oh, we love you, Miyoko. <laughs> ah, come on now. No foundation of substance. That means you never really had the foundation of word. Because when you really have the foundation of the word, when the word resonates truly in you, in us, then foundation of substance, meaning exemplification, as both brothers prayed today, will emerge naturally when you are truthfully connected to who? God. To God. Not just connected to the human being. And when that human being, as our beloved true father now is in the spirit world, some people cannot even handle it. That tells you, number one, they were never really connected to God, never really connected to true father, heart, and spirit. Yes, maybe some of us are going to cry a little because we miss true father. But sometimes some people cry because they never really understand the word that father has been saying. Because if we really believe in the spirit world, which is so true, then we must know father has gloriously ascended. There's no way around that. If we believe it, it must be a day of, you must rejoice in a sense. Yes, mommy. It's amazing how, again, as I'm telling, yeah, listen, listen, now, listen, that's why the word, be careful, be careful about those intriguing things that in many ways does not help us to live righteously. People are so interested in this knowledge of, you know, the stars, the numbers, numerology, this, that, that. Good. But if I know all that and I don't know how to create relationship, harmonious relationship with my family, which is God's number one to, 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 to create environment where God can, his love can be felt. What good is it if I can tell you, oh, nine plus two is this and that, and because of that, this is, sorry. It is more important that we do our best to exemplify the word love, and you're right. Nothing wrong when we are, you know, when we are really actively, uh, people can say, oh, Mrs. Bio, she shows a lot, she, she's doing, she's, some foundation of substance is strong. Then, yeah, good, good, God wants us to know everything. But we don't put that ahead of, 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 of God's fundamental word to love each other. Because I believe, and this is my own opinion, and maybe I'm wrong, but I know that instinctively I'm not wrong. When we really have the love of God in our heart, knowledge will be opened up to us. We'll be more creative. Creativity will come. The ability to understand things will really come. Because we're talking about connecting to God, the one who knows all things now. We're talking about the one who created the world, who knows all things. So if I'm connected to that pipeline very well, Oh.